The night of February 22nd, 2017, me and some friends were at Austin's Bar and Grill. We had noticed somebody giving the two victims a hard time. He was being a uh, racist, and I remember him saying, like, get out of my country. We helped escort him out of the bar. Thought it was, you know, done and over with, and about 25 minutes later, somebody yelled, he's back, he's got a gun. And that's when he started shooting. I did witness the victims being shot. As soon as he lowered the gun, I was up and like jumping over people to try to stop him. I thought he was out of ammunition. I went after him. It went from me trying to grab his shoulder to me pushing the gun down away from my face because it was all in the same motion. So it actually went through my hand and then hit the collarbone, bounced around in there a little bit, sitting right about in there now. When it hit me, it, it you know it dropped me to my knees, bouncing off my spine. Luckily, within a few seconds, I tried to get back up and go help, and he was gone already. He jumped right in his car, and he drove. He was arrested later that night, about two and a half hours from where the shooting took place. The following day, when I woke up, and I was like, holy crap, that wasn't a dream, for one. My arm was in this like big yellow cheese block looking thing, and I was like, man, what the heck happened? It was frustrating. I was made out to be a hero, and I was like, no, that wasn't the case. I was just trying to do what was right. I'm a huge believer in, you know, just doing what's right, and it'll, in turn, lead you to living a good life. So, I mean, I believe in karma. Adam Purington ended up being sentenced with one charge of murder, two attempted murders, as well with the hate crime, and in total, it ended up being three life sentences. I think about Serenovas pretty much on a daily basis, what if I could have done something more, you know, like to, to stop him before, like if I would have tried to talk to him when we escorted him out or, you know, called the cops. All those things run through your head, like what if I could have done something to make this to where a man wasn't senselessly taken from his wife? I carry guilt on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's, that's something that I feel I'm going to carry till the day I die. Ian, Colleen, it's good to meet both of you. Likewise. Nice you. Thanks for having me. Colleen, what, what inspired you to contact me about Ian? Ian's one of the most incredible people I've ever met in my life, and I'm so fortunate to get to be his wife. And I hate that he's going through that. And not just that, but I feel like this is also something that's a very real thing, survivor's guilt. Ian, is, that, is she accurate in that? When you hit certain milestones in your life, do you reflect on that and say, wow, um, I'm doing this, but if I'd done something different, then I wouldn't be the only one doing this right now? Yeah, most definitely. Um, definitely something that even the smallest things, you know, it can, uh, it can bring you back and, you know, make you think about, you know, what, what could have been, what should have been um, for Serena Voss and his widow. You were listening to the first part of this episode where I was talking to these three lovely ladies here, survivor's guilt is a very real thing, but it's not a diagnosis unto itself. It's a symptom of post-traumatic stress disorder. And that's what I think you're experiencing as well. Do you think that's true? Oh yeah, um, definitely. Uh, the best way to be able to put it would be exactly that. You know, it's a, a side effect of the PTSD from that night. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.